Welcome back to the more or less unplanned eighth video about the details of the A1335 precision hall effect angle sensor. Uh, the last video was cut short because I came down with a summer flu. Yeah, not the virus of uh, unknown origin. Uh, but to, uh, yeah, this morning the fever broke and uh, now my <coughs> nose is running and I'm sneezing my head off. Uh, but that's okay. I'm getting better and uh, I got bored. So we will just continue where we left off last time. And that was a more or less theoretical introduction to harmonic and segmented linearization. That is error correction. Card here, link in the description. Anyway, enjoy. Let's start by taking some error measurements with this external angle encoder. Yeah, we talked about that in the previous video. And I made, yeah, some, some slight improvements here to the setup. Uh, let's just see how it works out. Okay, I'm here now at my mechanical zero position and you should see over there that we are really with the right sensor at zero degrees. However, my <laughs> Lego implemented mechanical zero position is obviously not exactly zero. We are uh, two degrees off counterclockwise. I will have to make a note of that. Now we have to move the whole thing 22.5 degrees clockwise. Uh, remember, we have to take error measurements for the segmented linearization. See the last video. Every 22.5 degrees. Okay, let's do that. With the offset in mind, we should end up at 70. 0.5 degrees. Uh, let me align that thing here a little bit better. Okay, I moved the whole thing a little bit more to the center of the lens to avoid parallax errors, but we should be now pretty much at, yeah, using that scale, 70.5 degrees. And you see we're actually measuring 21.45 degrees. Now, I won't bore you with the other 14 measurements I have taken. Uh, I had, of course, to reposition here my lever or angle indicator a few times. But anyway, I have now <coughs> 15 numbers. And please take these 15 numbers with a grain of salt because my external angle decoder is not that precise. Anyways, <clears throat> and please uh, ignore the external encoder uh, degrees I've written down there. That was just for my orientation, so I won't mess up. If we subtract the uh, ideal reading we expect from the actually measured reading for each external encoder position, we get here some errors. And if we plot these errors, you can, well, again, within the limits of the precision I have here, guesstimate the sinusoidal nature of our error due to the misalignment of the magnet with the sensor. We already saw in the previous video that now we just have to tell the A1335 what are the actual measurements, that is the angle it measures, is for each of these 15 ideal positions that we determined using our, well, <clears throat> external angle decoder. And in the library, I first, in the public part, define here two structs. One struct, linear coefficients integer, 
which just contains an array of 15 unsigned integer 16-bit values, which contain, of course, the angle and degrees in 360 over 2 to the power of 16. And because I'm lazy, a second struct linearization coefficients float, which is exactly the same, but here we have an array of floats that are con or should contain an angle between 0 and uh, 360 degrees. Of course, we have also two public methods here, segmented linearization coefficients. One gets that uh, struct containing the integer array, the other gets as an argument the struct containing the float array. And both, yeah, as always, functions can of course fail and then you can retrieve the error using our last library error function. The implementation of the segmented linearization coefficients for the integer array is a little bit convoluted, but stay with me. So I have here just a local variable coefficient, which I count up in a loop here from my coefficient 0 to my coefficient, well, efficiently 12, because I increment here within the loop with 2. Then I do a normal write extended address to yeah, the base address in the RAM where all these coefficients yeah, reside. And uh, I add to that my coefficient counter here divided by 2. So every time I increment here by 2, I only add here 1. And then I take my coefficient plus one, that would be called in the data sheet the even coefficient. Uh, here it's of course, since we are starting our array with zero, the odd coefficient. And I convert that into a 32-bit value. Remember, SRAM values are 32-bit and shift that two bytes to the left, that is into the two most significant bytes. And then I logical all that with converted to a 32-bit value with my even coefficient, yeah, my odd coefficient. So without the plus one. And so I write here for the first 14 coefficients, always two coefficients at once into a single SRAM location. If something good should go wrong, I simply return false at that point. And finally, I wrote the last, the 15th coefficient, so in my array, the coefficient number 14, to the end of that address range in the SRAM with the write extended address function that allows me to write only a partial, a part of a 32 SRAM word. And here I'm writing, of course, only the two least significant bytes here with my 16-bit coefficient. The implementation of the segmented linearization coefficients function for the float array is a little bit more straightforward. So I have here, of course, my coefficient counter and I have here a local struct linearization coefficients integer. And I also have here, we saw that in the uh, video before the last uh, card here, if I haven't already carded it, link in the description, a uh, coefficient scale variable, which I will use to scale my float value into an integer value. So I go through all of my 15 coefficients and first check if they are in range. So if they are between zero and less than 360 degrees, if that's not the case, I throw a library error here and return false. Otherwise, I do that scaling stuff here. So first I scale my 0 to 360 into that uh, 2 to the power of 16 over 360 degrees here. And then I make sure that if I round that value to an integer, I don't add up at 65536 
okay? And all that's left is to write that into my integer array here, rounded of course to an unsigned 16-bit integer. And finally, I just call our already implemented segmented linearization coefficients for the integer array. And yeah, if that fa fails, uh, also false is returned. How about a little test sketch for the whole shebang? So here in my sketch, I first have a constant expression linearization coefficients float for my right sensor. And there I just initialize the array within the struct with my, yeah, actually measured values. I also commented out here in my algorithm bits the algorithm segmented linearization bypass bit because we now want that segmented linearization really to actually do its thing. Uh, please note, uh, I only have one variable for that here, one constant expression. So uh, this is also now activated for the left side where I don't set the values, but uh, we just forget about the left side for now. At the very end of my setup function, I'm using here for my right chip the segmented linearization coefficients with that struct that contains the float array to send all the coefficients over to the A1335. And that's it. The loop is completely unchanged. So what's the result? Uh, yeah, I'm down here, I think. Am I? Ah, whatever. Uh, yeah, I had the uh, greatest error. Can I show that? Uh, at With 5.54 degrees at uh, my encoder position 20.5 degrees and it should be 292.5 degrees. I uh, set the encoder position here to 20.5-ish degrees and as we can see our result is now 292.85. Uh, Ideally it would be 292.5, not 0.85, but uh, yeah, <clears throat> that, that encoder here is not that precise. Uh, the next biggest error I had here at uh, encoder position of, yeah, it's uh, not ideal. At 34 degrees uh, there, we got a reading of 320.19, an error of 5.19 and ideally that should be 315. So let's go up to 33. 43 degrees. Mm -hmm. That's 40, 43, and we are reading that 43. That's 40, 41, 42, 43. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, about here. And now we are reading 315.18 instead of, yeah, ideally, <clears throat> I mean, ideally uh, 315 degrees. So yeah, that also works quite well. So that's it for today and <laughs> for now that should be enough about the A1335 precision hall effect angle sensor. Uh, the thing can do much more but I think uh, it's enough for now and we should uh, yeah, move on to something else like actually uh, working on the project that I hinted when I <laughs> built that little setup here, a uh, card here, link in the description, which is actually, well, you will see. 
Okay. Um, anyway, I'm still not feeling that hot. Uh, that is, I'm feeling a little bit hot, a little bit feverish. Uh, yeah, my throat is not quite okay and my nasal cavities are still a little bit plucked, but uh, yeah. And I'm sorry that I um, neglected to answer to your comments for uh, about a week now. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I had to start working again, even I'm not feeling that well. And uh, yeah, that leaves um, not enough energy to really uh, give you qualified answers to your comments and questions on the videos. Anyway, till next time. Bye.